Hey guys, what is going on today? Bojo here back again for our NHL 17 franchise mode following the Carolina Hurricanes. It's been a month. <laughs> I can't believe it's been a month since I haven't uploaded another video of this for you guys. But we're back. We're back. We're back. And I have to figure out where exactly we left off. So if you guys are excited to see the franchise mode come back once again, Hopefully I will try to keep this consistent as it is because I took a little bit of a hiatus from this because I was concerned with work and things for the time being, but kind of seems to have subsided a little bit. So we're kind of try to get back on track here, but you guys want to leave a like if you're excited to have the franchise mode back, make sure to like that thumbs up button down below. But as you guys can see our last episode here, we had a, uh, little playoff run with our AHL team. So the National Predators ended up winning the Stanley Cup in the NHL. We unfortunately missed the playoffs with the Carolina Hurricanes, but the Charlotte Checkers ended up going all the way to the Calder Cup Finals and won against the Lehigh Valley Phantoms in I think five or six games to capture the Calder Cup. So that's good for our AHL prospects. And you know what? It's looking pretty good for our NHL team as well. So they're definitely in a rebuilding year and we're gonna pretty much just take it into the draft in this video. I don't need to do any like prospect, like searching or anything like that, because we're probably gonna have like a mid-teen round pick for this year's draft. And uh, actually we get the 12th overall pick in the draft, as it seems Detroit via Arizona, or the draft lottery, yep. So we get the 12th overall pick in this year's draft. And honestly, we will just uh, pretty much be picking the best player. All right, so retire players. Ooh, Brian Verbata ended up did retiring, so there goes out the window of pretty much trying to re-sign him there in the offseason. But take a look at all the skaters here who have retired this past year. Not too many, uh, any just players with above a thousand games. So Yager, uh, Joe Thornton, Henrik Sedin, Marion Gabrick, Brian Verbata, and Thomas Placanix are all out of there. As for, uh, whoops, how about uh, goaltenders? Any goalies retired? Uh, we got Nicholas Backstrom, Peter Budai, Dan Ellis. That's only really the notable guys right there. All right, so that's it for that. Uh, recommend the trading block. Okay, let me take a look at my trading block real quick to see if there's anything that I have to uh, update it with here. All right, so let's see. Is there anybody that we need to put on our trading block? Let's take a look here. Centers. Uh, is there any centers I definitely want to trade at this deadline? Johnson, Rask, Stahl, Patrick. No, I think our I think our center core is pretty good, so we're fine with that. Left wingers: Aho, Skinner, Taravainen, Di Giuseppe. I think are all good. Right wingers: Lindholm, uh, Zykov's back up to an 84, as we just saw. Gautier, I think is fine. I think we're good on that. Defenseman: Falk, Bean, Hannafin, Pesci, Slavin, McEwen. Sandheim, Flurry, Schuster. Yeah, I think we're good on the defense. And then goaltending. Oh, yeah. Wasn't goaltending something we wanted to do? Bishop, Ward, Eddie Lack. Really doesn't have much trade value onto him right now. Now, I think Ben Bishop and uh, Cam Ward is what we're going to go with into the next year as well. Is Cam Ward's final year of his deal? Yeah, it's the final year of Cam Ward's deal. So we can't even trade him, nor him or Eddie Lack. So I think we're fine on that end right now. So nobody we need to trade. Uh, nothing we really need to do on our trading block here, so we're gonna kind of continue to sim up to the draft. So let's start the draft, why don't we? And just get right into it. See who we're gonna draft with our picks this year. And, uh, you know what? We'll just pick the best player available. So we'll swim to the user pick, go for the first 11 players of the draft to see what the teams have gotten. And, uh, oh, Joe Valeno. Okay, so Joe Valeno was the number one overall pick this year in the year number two draft going to the New Jersey Devils, so he's going to be a star there in New Jersey with with uh, Havel Zaka, Jovelino, but Raphael, Tumamoyan, Jass, Jacobson, uh, Miseli, Vorobiev, Ekholm, Osgood, so Detroit picks another Osgood player, uh, Glebov, Nylander, who's a top four, low top four potential defenseman, and now comes time for the Carolina Hurricanes, so I think defense, we're looking pretty fine, so I don't think we need to go after a defensive type of player and these are all forward these are all defensemen right now Orlamov and Korobov Kravchenko is up there as well let's take a look at potentials here best possible potentials uh let's see so Donovan's a first and a second first and a second first and a second yeah so nothing really too fantastic here 
I think we just got to go with the best possible player that we see right here. But there's a lot of first round players, obviously. And you know what? I'm looking for a winger. Like, Zadina is a center, but I don't know if I really need a center all too much. Philippe Zadina, 18 year old, two way forward from HC the Dynamo. Um, there's also Filatov. Take a look at this guy. Boris Filatov is a grinder. This guy was a two way forward. We really don't need defensemen. Uh, Nando Eggenberg, a Swiss player. Or we can take a power forward and Phil Booz, who is 20 years old. Kravchenko is up there as well. Vladimir Kravchenko, 20 year old. We don't really have many of these guys scout all too much. It's a lot of European players who are really swarming the uh, swarming the top of the draft board here, it seems, in the first round. So all these guys do have high league interest. What do you think? Fleep Zadina. He kind of looks like a flash to heaven in a sense. That's pretty funny. Uh, let's see. So Eggenberg, who's a two-way forward. Zadina, who is a center two-way forward as well. I think we should probably just take Zadina, and then maybe we can move him to wing if it's not working out. Because all these got two-way forward, power forward. I'd rather get a two-way forward, get some more defensive type players. So you know what? We'll take this guy. We'll take Felipe Zadina, an 18-year-old center two-way forward from the ELH. Let's do it. Make the pick. Felipe Zadina, welcome to the squad. Medium potential for a top six forward. I will definitely, definitely take that. Uh, it's probably one that, if that's probably the second best potential that you can get instead of uh, elite and franchise. So we'll definitely take Vel Felipe Zadina. Pretty good trade. Pretty good pick right there. Not even a trade. I don't know why I said trade, but pretty good pick right there. And now we will go all the way probably to our second overall pick if we have any extra picks here. Uh, let's see. Jay McClement will go to the Winnipeg Jets in exchange for Chris Thorburn. Let's see. What does good does this trade do for us? Two years left, two years left. So Jets would give us Chris Thorburn and we would give up Jay McClement. So let's see. If I went under Chris Thorburn here, what is the... What's the, pretty much, why are they doing this trade? I don't even know what Thorburn is. Thorburn a, Thorburn's a left winger. 81 years old, uh, 81 overall, 35 years old, is a grinder, bottom six. His defensive category is nowhere near what uh, Jay McClements is, even though McClement is a type of depth forward. I'm going to say no Winnipeg. There's no, really no reason to do that kind of lame-ass pick so we'll go all the way up to our second round pick number 12 uh, let's see so some more still some pretty good players being drafted here yes I'm still definitely some good players being drafted still in the second round all right so we'll make our pick here number 12 overall in the second round which is 42nd overall lots of second round players here as well we don't really need goaltender prospects we just need to continue to stock up on forward prospects is really what we need to focus in on here all right uh, so for yeah, it's pretty much it potentials aren't looking great for any of these players so far but uh, Grun Gunderstrom is or Gunderson is probably the best potential Forward with the best uh, overall right there. All right, but we do have a lot of forwards here. They're stacking up the thing here All right, so we have let's see Alexander Kulshov to a forward. I can't go through these guys unfortunately uh, Isaac Lundstrom, center playmaker. Uh, Lars Tomarins, power forward. Emmerich, Eddie Emmerich, maybe Doc's son. Uh, Riley Sutter, two-way forward. High potential on all of his stats right there. High potential for puck moving skills. We actually did scout this guy pretty well, I would say. I mean, 60s everywhere. Uh, Nichushkin, don't have him scouted too much. Kulshov or Lundstrom. I'm going to take a squeed. Uh, a squeed? Squee. I'm going to take a Swedish center right here. And this guy, I don't even know what his first name was. Uh, low potential for top nine. Okay, I'll take that. I'll take that. I'll take that. I might want to go back and look at the uh, second round for a bit. I'm going to call one of my timeouts there to give me some extra time. Because I want to go take a look at the uh, second round here. After my pick to see if anybody took anybody. So Sutter. Okay, so I'm glad I didn't take Sutter. I was about to take him. And I'm kind of glad I didn't. High potential for AHL top six forward. So I'm glad I didn't end up uh, taking Sutter, even though I was going to because of the scouted uh, scouting report on him. I'm glad I didn't take that and I took low potential for a top nine forward in uh, 
Blunderstrom. All right, so let's see. Emmerich is right there, Fedorov. Uh, Tom Renz was medium top nine. Okay, so it would have been better to take Tom Renz. Nachushkin was up there as well for medium top nine. Uh, Kolsov was top nine. Yeah, so all these guys are top nine guys, top six, top nine forwards. Okay, nothing too crazy there. Uh, is that Riley McLeod? I think so. Rutu, Nive, Bouchard, Poirier. I think that's uh, Emile Poirier's brother. All right, so it might just be time for some depth players right now. I think maybe now we go with third round and probably best overall potential. Yeah, I think we definitely should take at least one defenseman in here somewhere. And I think this could be the round to do it. Although we do have a center uh, a winger sniper stinger right in the face in Jose Zajac. <clears throat> which would really, really be nice to add. But adding another def We really don't need defense. Our defensive core is young enough as it is. We really don't need more defensive prospects. We really need to stock up on the on offense. So Zajac would be a good, since we don't know his potential, it's unknown. And other than that, Montador would be down here, Fred Montador. He's the next best guy, uh, Daniel Vertini, or Verti, yeah, Verti. Uh, Sparks, Donald Sparks, Levin, David Levin. Maybe David Levin is supposed to get good, I don't remember though. I'm going to take, uh, take a winger sniper in uh, Jose Zajac, an American. I'm going to take him. Uh, bottom six forward. I'll take it. All right, so we're doing a pretty good job drafting so far. Let's go to the next pick. Yeah, let's go with Hillis, another American offensive defenseman, fourth round. Uh, AHL top two defenseman. That's actually not too bad. Up, oh, whoops, I don't want to offer trade to Calgary. Going all the way down. There he is, right there. Defensive defenseman. Looks like we're going to be taking Taylor Egan with this pick. So we'll take another defenseman there, Taylor Egan. In the fifth round, another AHL top two defenseman. I will definitely take that. That's three red star potential, which is really, really nice. So I think I'm going to, yeah, I'm just going to uh, send the entire draft now for the sixth and the seventh round picks, which are fine. Uh, Adam and Semchuk are the last two guys that they took for us there in the sixth and the seventh round. So a pretty good draft overall. Our first round pick was actually pretty good in our couple of uh our second and our third round picks were pretty decent as well. So it's kind of boring to get back into the GM mode, but uh, to do the draft and the re-sign phase. But you know what? You got to do it sometimes. You got to do it. So let's go to our salary caps here. Let's go to the rosters, uh, our contract situation. Let's see what we're going to hash out here for re-signing players. So goaltenders, uh, Bishop and Nedeljkovic and Booth are all signed. Allshuler, I do think we're going to just qualify him. We're not going to sign him. Uh, Jeremy Helvig. Me and potential for an AHL starter. I don't really think I need Jeremy Helvig, so I'm just going to release him. Eddie Lack is kind of unhappy with the situation right now. He's a backup goalie. If he wanted like a two-way deal, which he still doesn't want a two-way deal, I might have to let him go. Uh, Burgundy was the second-round pick. Pete Burgundy. Uh, oh, yeah, he was a... Uh, did we sign him free agency? No, we drafted him. He was our second round pick uh, the previous year. A goalie, we took him, Pete Burgundy, who's a starter. So we're still gonna leave him unsigned for the current time. Don't think you really need to sign him since we have Callum Booth and Nadelkovic is uh, turned into a medium potential for a starter. We really don't need that. But Cam Ward, we definitely do want to re-sign. He's 34 years old, 85 overall, if we can get him back. As a one year deal for Cam, which would be great, which is exactly what he wants. So you know what, Cam, we have plenty of cap space. I'm gonna give you exactly what you want. One year at 1.7 is perfect for you. I think we can get rid of Eddie Lack. I think so. We can release Eddie Lack into free agency. Some people are definitely gonna lose morale for that, but it needed to be done. All right, so that's it for pretty much the goaltenders, defensemen, who we got. So Falk's good, Schuster's good, Jake Bean is good, Flurry is good as well, Sandheim. Uh, Carrick, McEwen, Wesley. All right, so Ganley. We probably don't need Ganley. Definitely not. Well, AHL top two. 68 overall, though, at 23 years old. Now we can release that. Okay. Uh, so Noah Hannafin. All right, let's qualify all the guys we definitely need to. Noah Hannafin definitely is going to need a contract. Uh, ooh, really? He doesn't want that much. Looks like he's gonna grow a decent bit, so I think I'm gonna try to get Noah Hannafin long term right here. He doesn't want much. He definitely wants two years, but I'm gonna try to get Noah Hannafin signed long term. Five years, we'll probably get him until he's 26, two and one. I can get probably Noah Hannafin for five years at 2.5 mil, which is pretty much gonna be a steal for the next five years. 
And if he turns out the way he should, then I think we'll be sitting pretty. So me and potential 21 years old only for Noah Hanfin. I think I signed him long term. Five year deal for Noah Hanfin at 2.5, which is a fantastic deal to get him for. All right. Keegan Lowe, I think he'll be a nice little asset for our AHL team. I'll just qualify tending offer to him. If he wants it, he could take it. Uh, Brett Pesci and Jacob Slavin we need to get back, so we can qualify offers to those guys and qualify an offer to Slavin and Pesci. All right, but then we need to re-sign these guys. So, uh, ooh, Brett Pesci wants some money. It looks like Brett Pesci might get a nice little upgrade. All right, so we have Hannafin until he's for on a five-year deal until he's 26. So, you know what? Let's get Pesci for a three-year deal. Let's get Pesci what he wants. So, we can get him down to 2.1 almost. 2.12. A 2.125 for three years for Brett Pesci. Not bad for, like, a top six, potentially a top four guy. And then Slavin wants a little bit more, but it looks like Slavin might increase as well. Slavin looks like he's going to get really, really good. He's already a top four guy on our squad. Yeah, he's actually he is actually a top four defenseman currently, with high potential for a top six, which is really nice. So I think I'll get Slavin and Pesci for the same type of deal: three point nine, uh, three and then one. So what is that? Four or three point four? Yeah, that's probably what I want to. Three point four? No, three point five. Three point five for three years. Three years for Jacob Slavin. Get both him and Pesci back. Uh, Carroll, sixty years old, HL top two, sixty. Nah, we can just. We can lose this guy, Boosh. We don't need him. Uh, let's see. So a couple of our draft pick guys, the two AHL top two guys right there. Rafael Mayo is down there as well. All AHL top two potentially defensemen. So if we need extra guys. We can definitely sign them, but we probably have enough defensemen. And I could obviously go into free agency, sign some extra guys for a couple of your deals for the AHL. Uh, all right, right wingers, Julian Gauthier, Hoffman. We definitely don't need him anymore. Oops, I didn't want to qualify him. I wanted to release him. Well, now I'm stuck with him. <laughs> All right, Elias Lindholm, qualify him. How much cap space do we have? Oh, we have 20 mil. We have more than enough. All right, so Elias Lindholm, let's get him a contract. He wants four, two years at four mil. It uh, doesn't look ex look like he's going to change too much. So you know what? Uh, three years, same thing with Pesci and Slavin. Get these guys on three-year deals. 4.1, so four, and then two, so six mil. Or yeah, so 0.6. So roughly around like 3.6 for Lindholm for three years. We can do that. 3.6 for Elias. Sergey Tolchinsky, definitely want to qualify him. Get him back on his HL deals. Get him for three years. Bump that up there. Boom. Tolchinsky will be back. Valentin Zykov, let's qualify him. Let's see what he wants. He's a third line scoring line forward now, which is nice. Defensive category worries me a little bit, but his shot is good. Skating is fast. Puck moving skills are good. He's a physical type of sniper, which is interesting. Uh, passing is okay. Hand eye is good. You know, let's see how much he wants. How much do you, do you want? Ooh, three mil. That's a little bit rough. I might just qualify you, and if another team wants to take you off my hands, I will not mind. Because, I mean, your shot's good. How well did you do last year in the AHL? Uh, 51 points, 36 assists, 15 goals. Previous year, he was 20 and 20 with 40 points, plus 13. Had a decent year. If I have cap space left over, I'll, I'll sign him. I'll sign him. Because he might find a spot on the team. Uh, Nestor Cell. Do we want to bring Nestor Cell back? Let's see, 27 years old. Defensive category is not really too great. I can probably find somebody a little bit better, so we can release that. Victor Stahlberg, we definitely don't want a 77 overall type of player back. Lee Stepniak, I think we can definitely bring Stepniak back because he's a depth forward. Nice little fill-in player as an 83 overall type of guy. Yeah, we can definitely bring Stepniak back. He only wants like minimal money on a one-year one way, which is good. Uh, Lazarev Lind was the guy we signed the, uh, the 2017 third round pick from last year. Top six potential forward, but still 64 overall. That might be some trade bait for us in the future, to be honest. Cole Lind, uh, he, I think he'll take way, way, way too long for, to progress. So maybe trading him for like some kind of need in the future would be really, really beneficial for us. And then there's that pick. Jose Zajac, a third round guy, but he's already almost better, if not better, than Cole Lind. All right, uh, left wingers now. Let's see. Skinner, Teravine's fine. Aho, Pyarvi, Kashe, Wickman, Phil D. Giuseppe. Let's get... The Giuseppe back. 
as a depth he's a depth player right now interesting uh three-year deal 9.5 9.75 he still has me and potential to become a top nine forward at best he can be a fourth line guy for us so i definitely want to just have back Eric carlson we don't need him brock mcginn let's see brock mcginn is still a type of fourth line forward i'm not gonna take brock mcginn back no way i'm gonna release him Joachim nordstrom uh minor league scoring forward be good for an ahl role so you know what i will qualify Joachim nordstrom and i will offer him a contract one year on a two-way get him back alexander burroughs i don't think we need if i need him again i can just pick him back up in free agency uh, let's see jake mean lost him around because of that uh hudson elianuk grinder we really don't need him either release uh Paquin Boudreaux is 70 overall as a AHL player 23 years old yeah so you know what? I will sign Paquin Boudreaux because he is in the 70s so you know what we'll enter him in there he'll play on the AHL team any guy that's like in a minor league deal and has like 70 overall I'm definitely gonna sign him and then centers I think we're good everybody in the center department I think is fine let's see just a couple UFAs and some unsignees right here uh, Kukinen, don't need. Let's see, Mike Richards. Yeah, I will release Mike Richards. Uh, Brody Sutter. We don't need Brody Sutter either. And then we got just a couple of our draft picks. There's a uh, Lundstrom, Yamamoto's right there. Zadina, kind of the same thing. Philippe Zadina, this was our first round pick, 12th overall only 52 overall it's probably gonna take way way too long him and Coland, i think will be really good trading chips for us like he's just way too low of an overall for me to even like consider trying to up he needs to be like a mid 60s for me to even pay attention for him so i think we can definitely sign uh valentine zykov we probably have more than enough money so let me go back to right wingers zykov i'll give you a contract you could probably play on the team uh, i'm only gonna give you a one-year deal though at three mil Actually, I'll give you a one-year deal at 3.1, just to make sure I get you. I think that'll pretty much do it for our squad, and then I'll take a look at who is on our team and what is going to be looking for next year. All right, so Stepniak, Camor, Nordstrom, Lindholm, DiGiuseppe, Pesci, Hannafin, Slavin, Tolchinsky, Zyka, Boudreaux. Okay, uh, is there anybody else that we need on the team? Let me check. Other than that, I think everybody is good to go, though. Uh, goalies, let's see. So we have Ben Bishop and Cam Ward as the ones who punching net once again for next year. Uh, defensively, Falk and Bean, Slave and Pesci, Schuster, Hannafin, Sandheim, Hayden Flurry. It's a whole log jam here in defense in the defensive thing. We're probably going to have an extra defenseman in here somewhere, so making a trade definitely will be something to consider. Uh, but then in the forward position... Looks like we are going to have Tyler Johnson, Jeff Skinner, and Jordan Stahl up there in the front again. Lindholm, Rask, Taramainen, Zykov, Stepniak, DiGiuseppe, Nordstrom, Nolan Patrick, and Jay McClements, I would assume there. Maybe Sebastian Ajo will get a nice little boost and maybe make it onto the team. But for right now, we're looking, you know, decent. Our top six is good. Third line looks a little bit iffy there, but we're looking pretty good on the contracts. We're pretty much done with this, and we can... Moose uh, on into free agency right now. Take a look at what will be available. And you guys can help out the squad for free agency. Okay. Ooh, we got some big names here, boys. Really big names. A lot of names, actually. Wow. All right. So let's go forwards first. Forwards and UFAs. UFAs for forwards. So we got a lot of really recognizable names up there. Kyle Turris. Daniel Sedin, James Neal, Hornquist, Kane, Cam Atkinson, Bozak Perron, Vermette uh, Maroon, Jesper Faust. A lot of good UFAs are available right here in year number two. RFAs, Sam Reinhart, uh, William Carlson, I think, from the uh, Blue Jackets. Yep, William Carlson, Wenberg, Freiburg, Strancy, Mraz. Yep, so we got some good uh, players up there. Sam Reinhart, restricted free agent from Buffalo. Um, that's a really damn good player to add to the team. First line forward as well. But forward court looks pretty good for potential free agents. Defensively UFAs. 
A uh, lot of good f defensemen as well. Too bad our defense, of course, kind of already as a lock as it is, but we're still lacking a top two guy. I mean, Mark Ever of Lassig is sitting right at us. And how much cap room do we have? We have $8.3 million of cap available to make some moves. But Vlasic, Carlson, Cam Fowler, Johnson, uh, McNabb, Russell, Hamhuse, Spiza, McKeaton. So those are some pretty good UFAs, RFAs. Uh, nobody really good RFA, which is perfectly fine. And then goaltenders, not that we need any. Uh, let's see, goalies. Who's the best goalies available? Ryan Miller, Craig Anderson. That's about it. Briz is still up there. RFAs, a good RFAs, no RFA goalies available. Okay, and then do a quick rundown once again of just like prospects. Let's see who the best uh, potential prospects that are available UFA wise. Let's see. Let's see, so Hamilton's right here, but he's 26. Uh, top nine guys, that's about pretty much it for like young guys who are. Maybe this, oh no, he's 20, uh, this guy's 20, 74 overall, Carl Grundstrom, maybe, possibly, that Jamel Smith, uh, that's Giovanni Smith, Rocco Grimaldi's up there, Dubé, Dylan Dubé is up there, so, all the top nine potential forwards are in there, for, uh, those guys, uh, Trevor Ram Reemstike, but he's 26, top six guy right there, that's probably the best you're gonna get, and then any good potential goalies, Let's see. Uh, Manzanic. Yeah, just fringe starters and backups. That's pretty much all you're looking at right there for goalies. So, you guys saw who is available in free agency right now. And I'll go take you guys one more last quick little look at our team. If I'm going to also put the progression system into uh, place right here. So, Ben Bishop and Cam Ward obviously is on the goaltending tandem. For defense, we're looking at uh, we're looking at Justin Falk and Jake Bean being the one and number two defensemen right now for next year. Uh, top four would more than likely be Brett, Brett Pesci and maybe either. Well, let me see. Hold on. Falk is still top four. Pesci's top six. Slavin is top four. So I'm thinking like Slavin and Hannafin. Well, Hannafin's top six as well. And then Bean is top six. Now Bean's top four. Hayden Flurry might be able to get up there as well. So it'll be interesting to see the progression system. But I'm thinking Falk and Bean, uh, Slavin and Hannafin, Pesci, and then either Schuster or Flurry or Sandheim. Maybe even McEwen. Sandheim's technically a top four as well. So. It'll be interesting to see what the defensemen are working with right there. But I do have an extra maybe two defensemen in there that I definitely can trade as bait. Trade bait to maybe get a potential forward that I need. But you guys can help me make a decision on that. And then, as I mentioned, for our three lines, it's probably going to be Johnson in the uh, Johnson on the wing between Skinner and Stahl. Second line will more than likely... Once again, be uh, Lindholm on the right, Rask in the middle, Teravainen on the left. Uh, Zykov is very happy with his current position right now on the team. So Zykov will definitely be on the third line right wing spot. Uh, Nolan Patrick will more than likely center those guys on the third line, even though it's a depth forward. We played him on the third line last year. And, you know, he had a decent season, 32 points was a minus 9, but 14 goals, 18 assists, not a bad year for Nolan Patrick. Didn't really digress him, I would think, all too much. Maybe he might get a nice little boost in the offseason, but I'm thinking uh, Zykov on the right, um, Patrick in the middle, and then we still need a third liner, third liner for those guys to help them out. And then fourth line, I mean... We have plenty of lots of depth guys on here, but Nordstrom, well, Nordstrom, McClement, Di Giuseppe, Stepniak, High RV. We have lots of uh, minor league scores, and we can obviously reach out into free agency to get those players as well for the uh, fourth line. Maybe even Aho will get a nice little update. Who knows? But that's what our team looks like right there, guys. You saw what's available in the free agency for us to go out and grab as well. So I want to know what you think we should do going into free agency. Who should we add to our team? What do you think our team needs? And uh, hopefully this uh, franchise mode will back to will go back to being consistent because they're out of 33 minute video on the first one back. Also, guys, let me know if you do you guys want face cam in the franchise mode. I feel like it would not really 
be worth it all too much. To be perfectly honest, I think it's better just to go through the menus because there's way too many menus you go through in franchise mode, and I don't want to block anything out with the face cam. So, thank you guys for watching. If you did enjoy, leave a like, comment, subscribe as always. Let me know for some updates of what to do with the team. Other than that, I'll see you guys next time.